join me, if you would, let's stand together, draw your attention to the screen as we'll be singing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Good to see you today. started. And Father, we also ask, it's still, we see certain states in the country that they're making some changes even as we speak because of the resurgence of some of this in the areas. God, I pray for your protection over us. I pray that your wisdom for our doctors and scientists and those, Father, who are working uh, diligently around the clock to come up with some type of a vaccine or some type of thing that will will stem the tide of this scourge, uh, scourge across our land. So bless us, meet with us in these next few moments we're together and we praise your holy name and we thank you for this in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, you may be seated. I'll draw your attention to the screen once more. Very familiar song to everybody. We're gonna sing this, When We All Get to Heaven. Rejoice. 
Now I can tell if you, when, when we get to that, we'll sing it, shout the victory. Because for those of you that are saying shout under your mask, your mask is going <laughs> every time you give a little shout out, all right? So we just praise the Lord for the opportunity we have to be here today. And uh, we thank God that you're here today and that we can sing together, eat albeit, even though we're masked up. And uh, of course, um, I practice, I try, I sing with a mask, I've tried it, I preach with a mask, I've tried it. And so I separated myself far enough away from every one of you so that I would be able to have a little more freedom to be able to speak and to share what needs to be done today. I'd like to draw your attention now at the screen one more time. We've uh, added this into our service each Sunday morning in our services. So would you stand with me and we're going to read off the screen together the Word of God and that, of course, in Psalm chapter number 5. Psalm chapter 5. So let's read this together. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Give heed to the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I will pray. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you, and I will look up. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, nor shall evil dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. You shall destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercies. In fear of you, I will worship toward your holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is destruction. Their throat is an open tomb. They flatter with their tongue. Pronounce them guilty, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against you. But let all those who rejoice, who put their trust in you, let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him as with a shield. May the Lord add the blessing to the reading of his word today. Thank you, and you may be seated. Well, amen. As we said, it's good to see you today, and we're glad that you're here today with us. And uh, we're still trying to streamline and smooth out our service as much as we possibly can. And because as much as we've said that things are the same, things are a little bit different. And you can see the way the seats are marked out, and you can see with face coverings and so forth. And, and uh, we'll have to do this until, uh, until the time comes that we have the freedom to not be able to do this and to not uh, worry or be concerned about either giving somebody something we have or getting something from them that we really don't want. And, uh, but we're glad you're here. You know, this has not stopped the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? This has not stopped the church. And even when we weren't meeting like this under this same roof, the church was still going on. Messages were recorded. People were being reached out to. Many of you had helped people. We had opportunities to help people. And we're just so grateful for those uh, who are able to slowly come back into the worship house, meet together at the house of the Lord. There are still some that have concerns out there, health concerns, health issues, and we get it. We really do. And we just pray for them like we pray for each of you that uh, God will allow us again one day to all be together under one roof. Fortunately for us, we've been having our two-service format for a while, so this really helps us out to be able to have as many people come as possible between the two services, and so we're glad that you're here today. A few announcements that we want to make, and uh, want to remind you about Wednesday nights. We did open our Wednesday night midweek Bible study and prayer time, and we did that two weeks ago. And uh, we meet up here, we have the AC running, and when it gets a little warm, and then we, we can have plenty of room to be able to space out and to have a time in God's Word. 
And we've changed up a little bit. We're not handing out the prayer sheets, but people are doing what we call sentence praying. They're, they're, they're praying the requests that are laid on their heart as they go through, and we just pray around, and we have a good time in the Lord doing that. And so we so appreciate the opportunity to still meet together on Wednesdays. Now, ladies, for those of you that come out to the Thursday um, Ladies Gospel Project study, uh, for the next two weeks, there'll be no study on the Sunday morning. They meet downstairs, all spaced out in our fellowship hall. There'll be no study then for two weeks, and there'll be no study in the evening when they do the Zoom for the two weeks. So these next two weeks, um, I guess just catch up, get into your study, get into your book, read over the passages, go through that. But uh, those studies will resume uh, again soon. Um, I, again, I just want to remind you that we're not passing offering plates um, for the time being. And so if you have your tithes, offerings, missionary giving, and you brought that and you want to contribute that in to the work of the Lord today, we do have an offering plate in the front, and there's a little note on that. And then there's an offering plate in the back on the wild table. And again, there's a little note on that. Uh, hand sanitizers are on the wall. We have a couple of extras uh, that are out on little stands uh, if you feel you need to take care of that. Um, also, we got our daily breads. Unfortunately, they sent us like half the shipment that they normally do. So the daily breads are out there back on the table, and this is for the July through September quarter. We're going to contact them this week, see if we can get the other half of that shipment. But until then, we're asking if you just take one per family so that we can make sure between the service this morning and the next service to follow that everybody at least has one copy of this in their home that they can do their devotion time with together, okay? So if you'd help us with that. And when we get the new shipment out in, we'll, we'll put those out there and wipe everything down and have it all set so that you'll be able to take those and have your own uh, personal copy. I don't know why we just got half the shipment, but I don't know why a lot of things are happening the way they're happening now. So that being said, let's pray together and we're going to get right into our message this morning. Gracious Father in heaven, we come before your throne again and we thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for this opportunity we have to be in the house of the Lord today. Father, thank you for each man, woman, young person that's gathered in our room this morning. And Lord, might your word go forth quick and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword. Might it continue to do that discerning work in our lives. Father, I do ask and pray that if there's anyone here today who have yet to make Jesus Christ Savior of their life, God, that that would become a living reality today for them. Father, we want to thank you for these offerings that we've received today in our offering plates. Father, thank you for the faithfulness of your people. God, we recognize that everything we are and everything we have belongs to you and you've called upon us to be good stewards you called upon us to be managers of what you've given to us and so father we trust and thank you for the faithfulness of your people as they recognize this and they give a portion back to you of all that you've given to them bless them for their faithfulness bless them for their generosity and their kindness for our tithes offerings and our missionary giving that we continue to be in support all the way through what's going on this world pandemic we thank you that we've still had opportunities to share and to keep missionaries on the field through doing our part and keeping up on our missionary givings. Father, thank you for that. Father, I pray now that you might be with us in these next few moments of our service. Speak to our hearts and challenge each one of us, and we thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Take your Bible with me then and turn to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter number 1. 1 Peter chapter number 1. We started looking at Peter just before the Father's Day. And um, remember in Father's Day, we took a, just took that one Sunday break and we went over to Luke chapter 22. Because actually Luke chapter 22 makes a connection to the letters that Peter writes. Those letters that bear his name. So in 1 Peter chapter number 1, 1 Peter chapter number 1 we want to read verses 3 through 9. Verse 3 through 9, 1 Peter chapter number 1, beginning in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. 
In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Look at verse number three with me. This is one, we're going to look at several verses in here, but especially verse number three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You know, the people that Peter is addressing were in great need of comfort. You think people are in great need of comfort today? Turn on the news. Scour the internet. Look at what's going on with upcoming elections soon on the horizon. I would dare say that there are a lot of people in our country and not only in our country, but there are a lot of people in the, around the world that are in need of comfort today. We see this in the day and the time of Peter's writing. He's writing to believers. They were strangers scattered far from home. They were not in their usual surroundings. They were not in places that they were accustomed to. They were scattered abroad. They had suffered great, great trials. They had, they had been through great tribulation. And they were in need of, of not just some comfort, not just some consolation, but they were in need of plenty of consolation and comfort. This was part of uh, uh, Peter's fulfillment of the Lord's request of him. Do you remember we, we touched on this last time? We said this to you in Luke chapter 22, verses 31 and 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, do you remember what the Lord said to Peter? What did he tell him? Strengthen who? Strengthen your brother. Strengthen your brother. I think about that all the time. Is there somebody in the faith that you know that needs strength? They need to be encouraged? I was going to say, do they need a hug or an arm around them? But don't do that now. Give them an air hug, right? But there's always people that we meet, and even brothers and sisters in the Lord who are in need of great encouragement. It's interesting that there are four key points in this text that we're looking at this morning. And while I don't want to, I don't have the time, don't want to elaborate on all of them this morning, I still think they're worthy of mentioning. So let me just mention quickly. We see the source of all comfort and rest. What is that? It's abundant mercy that comes from who? Almighty God himself in Jesus Christ. The abundant mercy that we can receive from him. Aren't you thankful for the mercy of God? I mean, we don't deserve it, but I'm glad we get it. Number two, we see the source of hope in verse three. The source of hope is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul reminds us in his letters that if there were no resurrection, our faith is dead. It's empty, it's futile. There's nothing to it. There's no substance to it. Thirdly, we see that we have a promising future. In verse 4, he talks about an inheritance that's incorruptible that does not fade away. And I like that. And then finally, we see the security of a promising future. He says that all of this is reserved in heaven for you. You know, I can't wait. I can't wait. We sing the song, can't wait till we get to heaven. I can't wait until we get to, listen, all of this body and ailment and shortcoming and tribulation and trial and, and aches and pains and concerns and worries and, and all of that, guess what? In heaven, gone with a capital G exclamation point. Amen? I can't wait for that day. I'm really telling you. All these blessings are possible 
because of a living hope. Listen what the psalmist declared in Psalm 40, verses 2 and 3. He said this, He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my steps. He put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust the Lord. I love how this, the psalmist says, he brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. And what did he do? He picked me up out of that and he set my feet on a rock, solid ground, strengthened foundation, unbreakable, unmovable. And he's put the new song in my mouth. And what is that? It's praise to our God. Praise to our God. And he says, many will see it in fear and will trust the Lord. So I want us to consider this morning just a few things in this text in 1 Peter chapter 1. And then we're done. Look at verse number 3 again. There's one phrase I want to hone in on. It says that we are blessed according to his abundant mercy. The Bible says... He has begotten us again, now notice this, to a living hope. A living hope. Folks, if there is ever a time that the world is in need of hope, it is today. If there's ever a time that this nation is in need of hope, it is today. I was reading an article the other day, um, or I, actually I was reading it this morning, part of my devotion time. I was reading an article the other day that Ken Ham had written out, he's with Answers in Genesis, about the racism and the divide that's going on. And this morning he put out an article and um, he said it's not about race relations for the child of God and people. It ought to be about grace relations. And I like that, don't you? It's all about the grace of God that he gives to you and to me. And I thought, boy, if we could just put that up on some big square, if we could just put that out on the banners that we have in Jesus Christ a living hope. And so I'd like to talk about this for a moment. Notice, first of all, the reason for our living hope. What is the reason for our living hope that Peter talks about? Well, in Psalm 145, verses 8 and 9, the Bible says this. The word of God makes it plain. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his work. Listen, I want you to think about this, beloved. If it were not for his great mercy, each of us would still be dead in our sins. Now think about that. If it were not for his great mercy, as we said moments ago, a mercy that we don't deserve. If it wasn't for his great mercy, there are still people in the world today in need of Jesus, in need of knowing about this mercy. Ephesians 2, 4, and 5 says, But God, who is rich in mercy... Because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his love that has been given to us, overflowing and abundant in your life, my life, our lives as believers today. Matthew Henry, great commentator, Matthew Henry said this, quote, his mercy is everlasting. It is a fountain that can never be drawn dry. The saints who were now the sanctified vessels of mercy will be to eternity the glorified monuments of mercy, end of quote. You know, and I, I love how he says that because we see so much going on in our land today in regard to monuments. Are you seeing that? Are you hearing that? You seeing the news on that? We well, you know it's interesting. God says not only are we in Christ, we are saints, but according to Matthew Henry, I love what he says, the saints who are now the sanctified vessels of mercy will be to eternity the glorified monuments of mercy. 
Every, everyone that goes on to heaven, it's like we're a glorified monument as we enter in. A monument to ourselves? Oh no, a monument to the abundant mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. I like that. That mercy which was bestowed to us through Christ at Calvary is our living hope. You know, you ever get down in the mouth? You ever get kind of, oh, you're having one of these bad days? You know, I have them, you have them, we all do. We just, we sometimes we just get stuck in a rut. Are there anybody get stuck in a rut once in a while here? Anybody do that once in a while? Yeah, we all do. But when you do, I want you to remind yourself about the abundant mercy that we have in him. I want you to remind yourself that we have a living hope. When everything around us seems hopeless, we can be hopeful because we have Jesus. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 17 and 20 through 20 tell us, Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become our high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. I like that song, uh, My Anchor Holds. Remember that one? My anchor holds. We, it, 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 why? Because we have that solid rock. We're anchored to that rock, and that rock who is Christ, and this hope the writer of Hebrews says, we have as an anchor of the soul. The psalmist says, hope in God. Hope in, when all things look hopeless, hope in God. When it looks like the bottom's falling out, hope in God. Trust in God. Look to God in all things. Notice not only the reason for our living hope, but also the reality of a living hope. A living hope is hope which refuses to give up. A living hope is a hope that refuses to die. A living hope is one that, that has a dream and holds on to that dream and keeps going forward in the Lord. Peter's hope was not an illusion. Peter's hope was not fantasy. Remember the Lord told him, remember... Peter, Satan has desired to sift you, but I've prayed for you. That your faith might not fail. And when you returned to me, you gave him a hope. And he's given the same for us. The reality of this hope is based on his confidence, Peter's confidence in God's character and on his belief in Christ's resurrection. Listen, if you ever get to the place in your life where the things around you and the pressure start caving in, it could be at home, it could be at work, it could be at school, it could be at church, it could be just in everyday life. Remember to put confidence in him who makes all things possible for you and for me. Unlike Peter... We too can base our confidence not on ourselves, but in the very character of Almighty God. Not in ourselves, but in the belief of, in Christ's resurrection, knowing that there's a better day coming. And I look forward to that. Our meaning of hope is quite different from the Bible's meaning, isn't it? When we say hope, we usually mean want. Like, I hope it's a sunny day tomorrow. Another translation, I want it to be sunny tomorrow. But in God's word, hope means confident expectation. That is, our hope is based on God's promises and on the work of his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's hope. It's resting in the fact of Christ's Resurrection. As I said, it's not illusion that Peter believed in. It's not fantasy that Peter believed in. And neither should it be for us. It is fact. It is fact. Jesus was born of a virgin, came to this world. It is fact. 
He lived out his, his days as a young fellow, a carpenter's son. It is fact. He began his earthly ministry. Fact. He went to a cross on Calvary and gave his life for the sins of the world. Fact. He went into a borrowed tomb. Fact. He rose again the third day just as he said. Fact. And beloved, guess what? One day he's coming back again. Fact. Too many out there like, like Satan to Eve of old in the garden. You remember? Did, did God really say that? Is it really true? And this is often what the devil tries to do. He tries to push it and push it and push it to get us to begin to wonder, to get us to begin to doubt. And what we knew when we came to Jesus Christ as personal Savior, what we knew is fact based on the truth of the Word of God. If we're not careful, the devil seeks to hit you and hit you and hit you and work on you every day, causing you to doubt what you once believed on a solid foundation and held to. Don't listen to him, friends. Don't listen to that enemy of your soul. Don't do it. Rely on the truth of the word of God. 1 Peter 3.18, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. Edward Moat. M-O-T-E, the Baptist preacher and hymn writer who grew up as an ungodly youth on the streets of London, after his conversion, coming to Christ as Savior, he wrote, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Do you know where that's really found, the foundation of that song? You know where that's found? It's found in the relationship he has with Jesus Christ, in the hope that he had in Christ. But you find, you find that same message in Jesus' Sermon of the Mount. When he talks about that person that built their house on the sand and when the winds and the storms and all these things beat upon it, it says great was the fall of it. Why? Because it was built on sand. And then he talks about the one who built their house on the rock. And when the same winds and the same weather and everything beat upon that, it remained, it stood. Why? Because it was built on the rock. Hope makes all the difference in the world, friend. Our hope in Jesus Christ. Hope in God, said the psalmist. Our hope is a confident expectation. Our hope is not, well, I hope so. I hope the Lord is looking and seeing what's going on with this pandemic. I hope he is. I hope the Lord is seeing what's going on in our country with violence. I hope he is. Folks, the Bible tells us that the Lord, the Lord, he sees to and fro. There's nothing that's taken him by surprise. Our hope is confident expectation. Our hope is stored in heaven where Christ would return to be with the Father. And not only return to be with the Father, but you get this, you get this, that every day Christ is making intercession for you and for me. Everyone who names the name of Christ, everyone who's trusted him, for that finished work at Calvary, everyone who's in a person relationship, he's at the right hand of the Father and he's making intercession for us the world over. You say, well, how do you know if that's really true? 
Folks, I'll tell you what, the only thing that stops the tide of evil right now is the fact that Jesus Christ gave us his comforter, the Holy Spirit, to indwell us. When the Holy Spirit is removed from this planet, you've got to know this, that all you know what breaks loose. And there'll be no holding back of evil. Jesus makes intercession for us. The Holy Spirit indwells us that he left for us when he ascended back to the Father. You have to know that he's watching out for you. There is hope that will be fulfilled in the future. We look forward to the hope that's awaiting us. Yet we also have that hope with us, enabling us to live our Christian lives with unhindered faith, enabling us to live our Christian lives with love of God in our hearts. Our confidence in Him through the power of His Holy Spirit gives us a stronger faith daily in Almighty God, gives us a deeper love for others. No, in ourselves, we can't do it. We have no faith in ourselves. We have faith when our hope is in God. We're not able to love others the way we need to be loving them, but we can love them the way we ought to, the way the Bible, the Word of God teaches us when our hope is in Him. Folks, don't lose hope. Keep hope alive. Not only do we have a living hope, but we also have a longed-for home. A longed-for home. 1 Peter 1, 4 and 5, he says, To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that does not fade away. Can you imagine? Can you imagine living in a place where there's no corruption? Do you think there's corruption in this world? Oh, you better know it. I mean all the way from the top to the bottom. He's given us an inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, that does not fade away. Reserved for you in heaven who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in that last time. Notice our anticipation of heaven. As a child of God, this world is not our home. Can I get an amen on that? This world is not our home. I like the hymn writer Albert Brumley. He wrote this. The world is not my home. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home. Then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. My Savior pardoned me, and now I onward go. I know he'll take me through, though I am weak and poor, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land, we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their song of sweetest praise drifts back from heaven's shore. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Beloved, that ought to be the anthem of every believer in Christ. We can't feel at home in this world anymore. We're missionaries. We're witnesses. We're gospel sharers. We're encouragers of the brethren, strengthening your brethren in the faith which you've been called. Hebrews 13, 14 says, For here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to come. That's why he stated it this way. 
and we have an inheritance. Incorruptible, undefiled, and it does not fade away. Reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed the last time. You remember reservations? You remember when there was a time you'd go to a restaurant and you needed a reservation? They may start that up again. I don't know. I don't think they call it reservations so much anymore as much as they call them appointments. But it's kind of a cool thing, wasn't it, when you want to take your loved one for a special meal and you called and you made the reservation and you pull up to this place and, I mean, there's cars and people and you're like, oh, man. And you walk in, give your name, and say, I have a reservation for 6 o'clock. And they look in the book and say, yes, you do. Come with me. And all these people sitting around and gathered in cars, and they just take the menus, and you just follow them, and they sit you at a table, and you sit down, and guess what? Feels good. You had a reservation. You got in. And you're going to enjoy the meal and your time together with your loved one. I like how Peter writes to us here that this inheritance that we have, it's incorruptible, it's undefiled, it does not fade away, and it's reserved in heaven for you, for me, for each of us as we're kept through the power of God the faith and salvation we placed in Jesus Christ. So it's incorruptible. It means that it's not subject to decay or spoiling. I was working in the backyard the other day and I went out to my shed that I built that shed when I first came here. And I open up one end of the shed. I don't go in there as much as I used to anymore. And I walk in there and the roof started to let go. And I could see water seeping down. And I had equipment out there. And it's all, oh man, what a mess. And I thought to myself, you know what? I'm glad there's no corruption, defilement, decay, or anything like that when we get to heaven. No more broken down sheds. It's undefiled. Pure, untainted by filth. It, it does not fade away. It's unwithering. And it's for you and for me. It's for everyone who placed their faith in Jesus Christ. And it's faith in Christ, beloved, that gives us, gives us, allows us to live that living hope. And when everybody around you is saying, this is so bad, and that's not right, and this is wrong, and we take, we put our eyes on the wrong thing all the time. We keep focused, and I'll tell you what, if that's all your focus is, then before long, you're going to want, you're going to be like one of these crabs that just kind of gets back in its shell and just kind of hides and doesn't even want to come out and look at anything. But if you'll put your trust in God, and you'll use the common sense that God gave you, and you know what I'm talking about. Then you can ride the crest of the living hope that God in Christ has instilled in your life. And when you come in contact with family and friends and people, and they say, I just feel like the bottom, I just feel like there's no hope, I just feel like, I just feel, you can sit there on the authority of the Word of God and say, Wait a minute, wait a minute, honey, wait a minute, friend, wait a minute, sir. We have a hope, and our hope is Jesus. Get your eyes off of this and put your eyes back on him, that living hope that is coming to the world for you and for me. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless your heart. Let's pray together. Gracious Father in heaven, how we thank you this morning.
how we thank you for the word of God and the opportunity that we have to share today. Father, we've prayed so much. We've asked that you take this word and bless your people. We ask that you might strengthen us. You've already told us that in Christ we are overcomers. Lord, help us to overcome. Help us to overcome the doubts and the fears that we see being faced in the world today. Oh God, we're not making light of anything. We're asking you to just strengthen our faith. We're asking you to help us in our walk. To be the Bible-believing Christians you called us to be. To know that if we can trust you for our soul for all eternity, then we can trust you for everything else. Because our hope, our living hope, It's not based on the things going on around us. It's founded in you. Lord, I recognize that in our present state, we often come short. We also recognize You specialize in difficult cases, trying times. So, Lord, bring us through that we might continue to be the witness of faith that you called us to be, that we might continue to be gospel sharers, Christ followers, that you might protect us, watch over us, and that you might help us, Lord, to be useful helping those in need. God, again, it's my prayer that if anybody here this morning did not know Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, they just might ask Jesus Christ to come into their life to forgive them for their sin. Turn from that sin and turn to Him, knowing that He grant unto them everlasting life and that living hope not only now, but throughout all eternity. Bless us today. Work in us, I pray. And we thank you for what you're going to do in our midst. In Jesus' name, for his sake, amen. God bless you, and have a wonderful week in the Lord.